All right, it's been a couple days. The Cybertruck event has happened. People have gotten their trucks, and today we're gonna dive into everything Cybertruck. Everything from the pricing, to the range, to the details, to things that were mentioned in the keynote, and things that were not mentioned, that I had to sleuth around to find out, and many of you know, but some of you don't know some of these features and tidbits about the Cybertruck. We're gonna cover everything there is to know about the Cybertruck, so sit down, buckle up, and let's get started with everything that you ever wanted to know about Tesla's Cybertruck. Okay, let's start with the exterior. So not much has changed about the exterior. It's still comprised of cold rolled stainless steel. I mean, this is as tough as it can come. It's so tough that actually Tesla showed off that it's bulletproof. That's right, no bullets were able to penetrate through the stainless steel and enter the cabin of the truck, which is more than can be said about any other vehicle on the market today, even though they show you in movies it's hiding behind a door to stay away from bullets. Those bullets will actually penetrate through any other vehicle other than the Cybertruck. So you have a truck that's bulletproof. Now the glass, four years ago, they showed a steel ball. This was the most iconic moment. The steel ball being thrown at the glass, causing the glass to shatter. Uh, thus disproving that the glass was supposed to not shatter. Um, so this time what they showed was a baseball being thrown at the glass and it didn't shatter. Now it's quite a bit different from a steel ball but don't get me wrong if you take a baseball and throw it at any other glass it's going to shatter. So the fact of the matter that it didn't shatter is still an amazing feat. It just won't be able to handle a steel ball should you throw one at the Cybertruck window. Now, what else the glass had on the Cybertruck was a coating, a special coating that helps prevent rock chips and scratches and stuff like that. So the glass is a sort of armored glass, just not armored to steel balls, but still a tough glass nonetheless. Now, the front of the vehicle uh, has a frunk um, this frunk is actually the first of its kind because it's powered. Now, a bit smaller than what we had anticipated and hoped, but it is a powered frunk. It can be triggered from the front of the vehicle. There's a hidden button that will actually open this frunk. So those are features that are brand new, um, the first of its kind in any Tesla vehicle. You still have the most iconic headlight that goes across the front, and that's actually not the headlight. That's actually the daytime running light. The headlights are right below that, and those are still present as well. However, the one thing that is missing is the light bar. The light bar that was shown built into the windshield four years ago is now going to be on top of the windshield as a add-on accessory. We don't know what the cost of that is, but it's going to be available and that'll be extra. Now, four years ago, the Cybertruck didn't have a windshield wiper, it didn't have side mirrors, and it didn't have door handles. Uh, fast forward till today, there's a giant windshield wiper, the largest of its kind that will be present uh, on the vehicle. Um, we've seen many pictures and videos on that. There will be side mirrors because it is regulation. However, we haven't yet figured out whether those will be able to be self-removed or not. Elon did promise that, but we don't know. We just know it has to be delivered with them on. And lastly, the door handles. Four years ago, they had Model S type door handles. You press it, they pop out, you pull you're in the vehicle. Now those door handles are no longer present. In fact, what is present is just a single button. Uh, one button for uh, on the B pillar and another uh, button right behind the second row of seats. Press the button, the door pops open a little bit, grab the door and pull it open. Uh, so that's a little bit different than what we ex what we saw four years ago um, that's present in the production vehicle today. Now, along with that, as we go around to the rear of the vehicle, we're still getting a bed, uh, a six foot bed, none the least. Now it is six foot rated as the total length. However, after some brief little tests during the event, uh, we saw that a woman that's 5'10 was unable to lay completely flat in the bed. And that's due to there's like a little bit of an angular a piece right behind the cabin and the bed um, that's present there that doesn't allow you to lay completely straight. You may have to lay diagonal. We did also learn that the mid gate, the glass in between the cabin and the bed does not roll down. We 
also understood that there is no connection from the cabin to the bed, thus killing all dreams of an HVAC camping mode situation there. Now, outside of that, we still have a powered tonneau cover, which is awesome. Not only is it powered, but it's also the strongest tonneau cover that I've ever seen, able to support the human weight. You can actually stand on this tonneau cover and it's perfectly fine. So that's really cool too. Now, rounding around back on the tailgate, you'll see that the tailgate is actually powered and that's kind of nice and handy to be able to drop that tailgate it down and then lifting it up is actually assisted so you can actually see someone do it with two fingers to lift this tailgate up it's not heavy at all now as we round out the entire vehicle there are cameras all throughout the same like any other Tesla but the one difference is that this vehicle has a camera up front to help when you are off-roading and rock climbing now we're unable to test this and see how it looks and how it's going to present itself on the screen but know that there is one more additional camera on the Cybertruck that's not found on any other Tesla today now while we were unable to get inside the vehicle I did have an opportunity to sit in the back seat um, thus quickly being kicked out after um, but just getting a sneak peek on the inside we see that that you're presented with a similar landscape screen right on the front. Now this screen is more of a slab design as opposed to a tapered screen design. Um, the steering wheel from a yoke steering wheel that was like what it was four years ago has now been changed into more of a octagonal wheel that has holding all around the wheel, which will probably make it much easier when you're off-roading. Now, four years ago, there was a rear view mirror that was actually digital. It actually showed you what was in your rear view uh, via the camera. What we learned is that when the tunnel cover is closed, the rear view camera that's uh, back there is actually covered. Now what we learned is with the tonneau cover closed, you can't look out the back glass anymore. Your vision, your rear view vision has become completely gone. So what you do have to do is depend on the rear camera, which will present itself on the screen. So uh, that's kind of something to get used to is looking on the screen to see in your rear view mirror, but it's there and it's present. But I kind of wish they had kept that digital screen rear view mirror, which had been handy as far as you know, repetitive motion. We're so used to looking at our rear view mirror, being able to look up there is gonna be a little bit easier than looking at the screen, but it's still there. Now, the roominess inside the vehicle is amazing. I was able to sit three full grown adults in the back seat and we fit perfectly well. No complaints, no qualms. I had about two fists from the top of my head to the glass, lots of room, lots of leg room as well present in there. The front seats are ventilated, which is really nice. There's ambient lighting, and we learned that there's gonna be at least two interior packages, either white or black. We did see door panels that were white and other door panels that were black. Now, we don't know whether this is gonna be premium or not premium or only available in beast mode or not beast mode or what have you, but we also saw ambient lighting throughout the interior of the vehicle, which goes along with the new uh, pro uh, Project Highland that just came out, the updated Model 3 and so forth. So we saw those present in the Cybertruck as well. Now, during the event, Tesla had some amazing, amazing specs. I mean, these specs blew other competitors out of the water. I mean, we already talked about that it's bulletproof. We already talked about that it had strong glass, but did we talk about that it's faster than a Porsche 911 while towing a Porsche 911? Yeah, they showed this. This was incredible. This just shows you the beastly capabilities of this truck and just how fast it is. Not only how fast it is, but how much it can tow and what its payload was. It far exceeds uh, most of the trucks that are out there on the market today, including some of these really heavy duty diesel trucks. Now, another really cool feature that kind of flew a little bit underneath the radar is the whole steer by wire. No longer is there a connection between the steering wheel and the wheels. It's all software. The really cool thing about this is you can see all four wheels articulating, which allows this giant monstrosity of a truck to be very, very nimble, make tight turns when needed at slower speeds, and operate like normal when it's on faster speeds. A really, really cool feature that this truck has that I haven't seen available on any other vehicle on the market today. Okay, so let's talk about the configurations. There are three configurations of the Cybertruck. The same three that were promised four years ago. A rear wheel, an all wheel, 
and the top of the line tri-motor or what we learned is now called beast mode. Let's talk about the three of them and what they were promised four years ago and what they are, what they delivered now. Now, four years ago, the Cybertruck was promised at starting at a rear wheel drive at about $40,000. This was a shock and awe moment to see a vehicle with this much capability starting at $40,000. Well, what we've learned about is that the rear wheel drive is still going to be offered. However, we will only see it in 2025 and is going to be starting at not 40, not 50, but $60,000. We'll come in with 250 miles of range and a zero to 60 at 6.5 seconds. Now the sweet spot, the one that I actually pre-ordered was the all wheel drive. Four years ago, we were promised an all wheel drive at $50,000 and promising a 300 plus mile range. Now, what we got was an all wheel drive Cybertruck with 340 miles right along par to what we were promised, but not at 50,000. Nope, not at 60,000 either. Not at 70 either. It's $80,000, $30,000 more than what we were promised four years ago. And that was the part that stung quite a bit. Now, don't get me wrong, the features still are amazing and are still there, being able to tow 11,000 pounds, be, having like 7,500 pounds of torque, 600 horsepower, and a zero to 60 at just shy of 4.1 seconds is incredible. But the price, the price was quite drastic. Now, as we jump into the top tier, four years ago, we were promised a $70,000 tri-motor Cybertruck with over 500 miles of range. What we got was a 320 mile range tri-motor beast mode Cybertruck. That's not 70, not 80, not 90, but $100,000. It will also tow 11,000 pounds. Now this will have over 10,000 pounds of torque and do a zero to 60 at 2.6 seconds. So absolutely incredible, but man, $30,000 more and nowhere near the 500 miles. So this was very, very jarring. The prices of Cybertruck have gone up quite, quite a bit and I get it. Inflation is there. These things happen, but that price stung a lot of people quite a bit. Now with that all said, one thing that they didn't mention at the keynote, and, and what was really disappointing at the keynote was not the mention of the miles, not the mention of the range, not the mention of the price. This is all we had to get after the presentation was done, looking up and hunting ourselves to find these details. We also learned about a range extender. This was not talked about anywhere. And it's briefly mentioned on the website. In fact, we had to dig to actually find in the code what the pricing might be, which is estimated to be around $16,000 for about 160 miles of additional range through an additional add-on pack that sits in the bed. So your six feet will become four feet because this pack takes up about a third of the bed, which takes away from precious space for those of us lugging around things if you should need to for that extra range. Now that will bring all of your vehicles up quite a bit in range. Still, none of them will surpass 500 miles. They'll get close, but it's an additional $16,000, which makes stomaching the whole thing about the Cybertruck really, really hard. But it is what it is. The extended range battery pack is kind of nice because you can buy it after the fact later on down the line uh, should you need it. You don't have to buy it at the time of buying your vehicle and are locked and loaded with it. Now, the vehicle does still have plenty of power outlets. You have two 120 outlets in the trunk, a 240 outlet in the trunk. You also have uh, the 120 outlets inside the cabin, two of them. So plenty of plugs, none in the front, unfortunately. Um, you also still have the sub trunk, which can be uh, stuff can be stored underneath there. You have a slew, a plethora of accessories, including the base camp, which is a whole tent. I have a whole video on the best accessories for your Cybertruck. I'll put a link to that up above, but check that out if you wanted to see that. Now, in addition to all of that, there are some features that were not talked about about the Cybertruck. Number one being reverse charging. For those of you who don't know, there's a feature called vehicle to home. Tesla has never implemented this. In fact, I've actually asked this on investor calls on why and when can Tesla offer this. The thought is, is you have a vehicle, a vehicle with a large battery on it, sitting in your garage, fully charged and ready to go at all times. 
Should you lose power to your house, you should be able to leverage the battery that's in your garage, in your car, to power your home and all the essentials. Having your food not go bad, having medical supplies not go out is very key and very important. Sustaining life, the ability to keep your HVAC on and so forth. Why couldn't we do this before? I have no idea, but Tesla has made this available on the Cybertruck. All you'll need is the wall connector, which is 450 some dollars, and you'll need Tesla's gateway, which is I believe around $1,800. These two combined with your Cybertruck, you now can leverage that giant 112 kilowatt hour battery for your home. And that is an incredible feature. That's equivalent to like eight power wall. Now a Tesla power wall, is about 13.5 kilowatt hour. Using the Cybertruck as a power share would mean that would be equivalent to having nine power walls. Now, nine power walls at about $8,400 each makes that about $75,000. It's pretty much what you're paying for for your truck, but you're getting a lot more because now you have a vehicle that can actually move. So you have something that helps your home, is useful for your home, but then you also have a bulletproof, super fast truck uh, that has armored glass and, and all those features with you to take you on the road that can tow things, lug things and do everything of that sort. So it's a better buy if you're looking for something like that. If you're considering all that this vehicle can do, it's really amazing that it can do this thing called power share, which I'm super stoked about. Not only that, of course, it can power anything from your 120s to your 240s to charging another electric vehicle. You can do all that with this truck. Okay, so with all that said and done, you know everything there is to know about the Cybertruck. What do I think about the Cybertruck? I pre-ordered one four years ago. I pre-ordered an all-wheel drive. I added full self-driving. Uh, what am I going to do? Well, four years later, we've gone through some economic hardships and times. And right now, money isn't as free-flowing as it was back four years ago. So I have to be more careful and put a lot more thought into what I'm spending my money on. If I were to buy an all-wheel drive Cybertruck, that's gonna cost me $80,000. I don't qualify for the tax credit, so that's out the window for me. I have to add in $7,000 for full self-driving. I get it, I don't have to, but I've locked in that price. So if Tesla were to offer that, I would probably take that. Now we're at about $87,000. Factor in that I live in California where the tax is insane. That's another $10,000 on top of that. So now we're at, you know, close to a $100,000 truck on an all-wheel drive. And don't get me wrong, it's great. It's amazing. I love everything it does, including the power share. 340 miles, hey, that's more than I get in my three and it's more than I get in my Y. But right now, I don't need it. It's a want, not a need. And unfortunately right now, I'm more focused on what I need versus what I want. We don't need another vehicle. We don't need another truck. I don't build anything. I don't haul anything. I don't tow anything. So I wouldn't really be making full use out of the truck. It's just badass. So I probably won't be going with one at this moment in time. Fast forward a couple of years, maybe. So I'm gonna try to hold on. Let's see what happens. I think that right now it's the early adopter fee. You wanna get it early, you wanna rock that amazing truck, you're gonna pay for all the R&D and stuff that went in to create that vehicle. But give it another year, two years, Tesla's gonna see the market see what are people doing? How are people feeling? And they'll make adjustments. They've done it on the three, they've done it on the Y, the S, the X. You've seen prices fluctuate immensely. And right now, it's just the first cut of the Cybertruck. I'm curious, what do you think? Are you getting one? What do you think about the prices, the range, and so forth? What's your favorite feature of the Cybertruck? For me, it's the, it's the power share. Being able to power your home off this Cybertruck should the power go out is a, an incredibly useful, cool feature. Let me know down in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the video. And I'll catch you guys next time. Hopefully, I'm hoping, some more Cybertruck content to come. Maybe a full walkthrough. Let me know if I got that. If I had a my Cybertruck, if I had a Cybertruck in my hand, what do you want to see? I'll catch you guys next time. See ya!